All right, so for this video, I had a viewer message me and asked me if I could make a tutorial on how to create that kind of stereotypical uh, boom library sound. And also uh, to go along with one of Marshall McGee's recent videos where he kind of was doing this kind of low mids um, design for, and he was showing it off for different like spell sounds or like sci-fi weapon sounds or explosion sounds. But basically this is kind of like my go at it. Uh, normally when I do this kind of stuff, it's for, for like sci-fi weapons. So I kind of use a similar approach. Yeah, so let's just uh, jump right in here. I'm just gonna undo all the effects here and then we're gonna start from scratch and then I'll show you exactly the processes and everything I did to get to that final result. All right, so the first thing I did is I just imported a sample inside of here. And what this was was actually a um, kazoo that I was uh, playing with. And I was basically just making noise out of it. So, right, that's what it sounds like. I pitched it down two octaves here, as you can see. Um, I added a unison, sounds like this now. All right, and that was kind of my starting point for the design. After that, um, I actually had a gain here, and the reason for that is because I actually started with a different sample. So I'm gonna leave that off for now, but we're gonna turn it back on later because we're gonna need the extra gain to, to make sure everything goes through the processing properly. But if we go, uh, the first thing I did was uh, turn on multi-pass here. And what I was doing is I wanted to have different effects, actually the same effect for each of the different frequency bands, uh, but I knew they were gonna be affected differently uh, based on the input and all the, the, the different modulation that I did. So what I did here is actually, I, you can see here I have an audio follower and I just didn't have enough inputs to, to put on everything. So I actually had ended up having two audio followers. And then I put on the exact same plugins here. So I have a distortion for each band. I have a comb filter for each band, nonlinear filter, flanger, and filter, and another pitch shifter. So if we turn some of these off, and let's just have a listen to what it sounds like before and after for each effect. So you can see here the gain actually really matters for what's going into this plugin because it's affecting it a lot. It's adding a lot of more movement to the uh, audio follower. So that's why it was really important to have that. So I'm just gonna put on my uh, limiter on here just so it controls the sound a little bit. All right, so once I had that, I was already getting the kind of movement that I wanted, especially as I started playing um, lower on my keyboard and across the keyboard to different octaves to hear what the sound sounds like. I knew I was getting somewhere that I was happy with. So after that, it was just a matter of adding some other effects. So the next thing I added, I think it was this here, and I was using this uh, to modulate the phase up here of this file. And uh, so as you can see here, the level's at zero, and I'm modulating it with this envelope. So this envelope here is being applied to this. So basically it's going, it's just adding some, some processing and then it's coming right back off. So it's just, just this gesture here. After that, uh, one of the things I did is I usually like to add some sort of distortion um, at the beginning, just to add a bit of punch to my sound. Instead of adding something like a transient shaper, adding a bit of distortion and then uh, modulating it with an LFO here just to uh, to the drive. And here you can see the speed is somewhat fast. So basically it's just gonna add this like punch right at the beginning. Right, and that's how I added that. After that, um, I tried to add an ensemble here. And this is cool, it makes it a bit more sci-fi though. So actually I, I ended up turning this off, but I, you can have it on or off, but that's just what I did here. After that, I want to add a bit more attack. That's what the transient shaper is doing here. Change the pitch. Right, I wanted the sound to st still fit more in the lows and mids. And I still felt like I was getting a lot of highs. Add a disperser. All right, then I added another transient shaper here. After that, I added a filter here, and this one is being modulated with the same envelope that is modulating the wavetable down here. Did the same thing with this one here. Now I added another uh, instance of multipass, and my idea was similar to this one here, where I'm gonna add similar uh, effects on each of the bands so that, again, they're they're modulating differently. And what I did different for this one is actually I'm modulating the actual band. So the bands are gonna be changing over time. So let's have a listen to what this is gonna sound like here. So 
So basically, it's just adding a lot more movement to this sound. So if we take it off. Right, you just get a lot more sweeps, but it's a bit more subtle. After that, another transient shaker. I don't think it's necessary. I think I was just trying to get a bit more punch at the beginning. And then I have a limiter here. Right, and that's how I created that patch. Now, I was pretty happy with this sound here. But I still wanted to have it be a bit rounded out a little bit more. So one thing I added here was Subsynth. Just to add a bit of sub sound. Makes it feel a lot heavier. Recenter, I found, I was finding the sound quite wide. You don't need to put on this on here, but I was just bringing it in a little bit. So it sounds more like it's in front of you. A bit of OTT here. Now one cool uh, plugin that I had on here was uh, M ratio MB. And what I did here for the noise ratio is I brought it all the way up to 100%, which basically is reducing all the noise. So you actually don't hear it. So it's reducing all the noise. But then what I did is I'm modulating it with Reaper's uh, parameter modulation here, as you can see. And the strength is pretty low, but it's really getting rid of all that noise. So it makes it a lot more tonal. Now if I wanted to, I could make it a bit more here. All right, but if I really want to focus on those uh, those mids and those lows, I found that this was a great way to do it because it just removes all that harshness, all the noise from the from the high mids and, and the highs. So after that, I wanted to add some more transient punch back in. So that's what I did here with Neutron uh, Transient Shaper. And then I added just a soft clipper here to make it a bit louder and then again, add some punch back in. Now what's fun about this is you can actually try this out with different samples here and, and swap those out. Like right now here, I was, like I said, I was using a kazoo, but if we change it up and we try something different. All right, so here is one where I did a, a recording of a rubber band uh, pulling on uh, against like a violin string. Right, you put it in here and then you can get stuff like this. Right, it's still very similar, but you get something a little bit different. This one was just uh, me of my voice and I was just uh, singing vowels. It sounds like this. Right, but just experimenting with different sound files that can help change the sound. And what really I think made the big, uh, the big difference here is having these audio followers attached to different effects that are the same effects across the files here, right? And just playing around with that. And like I said before, if you add in your ensemble here. Right, and just like that, you can get some really cool sounds. All right, I hope you found that useful and valuable. If you want to see another sci-fi uh, sound design tutorial, I'll have one on the screen here. If you have any comments or questions, leave it down below. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.